Hello everyone, in this video we are going to have a lot of different stories and a lot of different news stories. Keep a critical mind as always. I will always try to put all the evidence and proof out there. If there isn't enough, then also you can search for yourself, but I will try to keep all those things out there for you guys. And as always, keep a critical mind and I hope you enjoy. Some of you are going to be like, why are you focusing on sun explosions? I want to make sure that her, along with any others who have popped out, who are on my radar, who have left, who are not a part of like a black screen stream or any kind of negative things happening in the community, which Sunny as Kunai was not a negative part of the community. I want to push them forward. I always want to do that. The good ones are the ones that get pushed forward. The other ones, well, they can be on their own. I uh, just wanted to say I wasn't expecting this outpour of love and support. I was thinking people would actually be upset for one reason or another, because, you know, there are the extremely parasocial Niji cultists, as they call them, Niji Sanji defenders, whatever you want to call it, that would either be very angry at them or try to dox them or just harass them or whatever because they're leaving the uh, heaven that is Niji Sanji according to them. But instead, I just keep getting hugs and support from everyone. Thank you all for being so great. It's to be expected. She didn't do anything bad in the Black Company. Like I said, same thing here. I, I didn't even read this until now. But yeah, because she hasn't done anything negative, she's going to get so much benefits. Because like, for example, Selene and Zion. Zion had had some issues, of course, you know, foot and mouth moments, but they didn't generally do anything negative. That's why they get accepted. Uh, Zion had some issues when they became Sayu, of course. Uh, S Selene had really no issues because she got terminated unjustly. S uh, Zion, a lot of people felt that it was um, warranted or not. I don't feel it was really warranted, especially not the way that they did it. It was a joke and that kind of stuff. It's just, it's weird the way things happen, the politics, but she is winning. What the hell is the discourse of the company to keep moving talents, having talents say this? If someone is neglected as Kunai felt scared about how her fans and VTuber community would react, but her leaving just what kind of conversation between talent and staff are happening. There are way too many stories that we've been hearing recently of all the people that have left. You know who we're talking about, the Roach Mom and others, who have said they felt like outside of Niji, they would be nothing. They felt like they were unmarketable if they weren't in Niji. They felt they were going to fail if they left Niji. That is some serious, serious manipulation techniques going on there. And it really angers me that anybody could feel this way. Uh, just what kind of conversation happened with Team's Talents uh, to feel this way? I might be wearing the tinfoil hat on this one, why does it keep happening? Isn't Tim Fall Theory a lot of those who left have said something that indicates they've been treated like they are nothing without Niji? So with general sentiment in their minds can imagine how much Niji brainwashes them. And that is the big issue. That is the big issue that I I don't like that. And that's why I push people like Kunai, who is not sending explosion, to the front and trying to help them out. For all of those unaware, or maybe hadn't seen my previous videos, we have Yuzuki Choko, who is a part of Hololive and has come out. Hololive has produced her most recent album. It's her first album out there. Yuzuki Choko's first album, Burst Song of Ruin, crossfade video released, and, and uh, the release location is there. You can actually buy the uh, the album in their shop.hololive pro sale period is up until october 15th at 6 p.m uh japanese standard time of course everyone congratulating her here is the actual yuzuki choko first album burst song of destruction and there you go 35 us dollars for the full album which has of course the cover the illustration it has all the tracks it has an asmr voice pack has a separate cd jacket set eight types a sticker sheet a mini square paper board with a printed autograph. So it has all of those things besides the track list. So you're getting like a collector's item pretty much if you're a Choco fan. You can absolutely get this as a collector's item. And moving on to, of course, the things that are shown on there is here. And of course, they're, they're announcing it even further. Bonus image for the first album, Burst Song of Destruction, has been released. Another jacket set, eight types in total, as I mentioned before. These are the jacket sets, the ones that you can get, all of the ones there. All the four different uh, of different types, all the ones that are different types, you get, you know, the signed uh, card in there as well as, as I mentioned before. And taking a look at the actual music video that was released, which is a part of what I'm talking about. Of course, um, just giving you a little bit of the sound of it. And that's a little bit of what's going on, you know, the, the announcement of everything, including the uh, the jacket sets that are there all the different ones that you can get for buying it 35 bucks is actually not bad for jacket sets and other memorabilia that you're getting with it um it is not cheap of course but it has the signatures it has all this kind of stuff it is a collector's item pretty much at this point so it is adequately priced for what it is and of course congratulations to yuzuki choko for being able to have an album and being able to to uh, produce it and have it out there for everybody we have aniplex us uh, at least aniplex plus in this case it's a Japanese subsidiary. 
uh, is showing the exhibition information there at Tokyo Game Show. Uh, Nendoroid, the prototype is on display at the ex expo venue today, which is this one here. I believe it is a Tokyo Game Show. Um, this expo, yeah, uh, they're showing a lot of different things here, a lot of different designs, a lot of different things popping up here. So this little expo here, the expo that they're mentioning here. Stay tuned for updates. What's their, what are they showing right now? They're showing Pecora. And it looks like it might have, if it's an Android, it definitely has different face plates and it will have a little bit of posability. As you know, as always happens with the face plates, with the uh, Nendoroids that are made. So pe pending licensor's final approval. What this means is that this is a final design and they're seeing if Hololive is going to be okay with it. It's a Type Moon F Go project. Uh, they're seeing if they're going to be fine with it, if the design fits the look and the IP design that the international property design that Hololive wants. Of course, everyone Pequoda is, you know, talking about and everything. It's just, that's what happens with a lot of these things. You have to take a look. They, they go through the development design of it, the initial prototypes of it, everything like this, is like a final prototype. And then they see based on the design that Hololive has and the, because Hololive does have actual uh, guidelines for the use of their IP. If based on the use of their IP, this follows what uh, designers on Hololive site, because Hololive has artists and things like that that they use, if it follows the designs that they want. And I'm hoping it does because it looks very, very cute. Of course, it's always out of my price range, unfortunately, but it looks very cute. And I hope that people are able to buy it because it's going to be an amazing addition to anyone's collection. Tokino Sora, the OG, the GOAT, the pitter with which a lot of Hololive talents, her, Miko, Roboko, and all the this Gen Zero, all the Gen Zero, all of them, are the pillars at which, on which all of Hololive stands right now because they were the ones. She's been there seven years. Sora was the first one that they that they produced, the first talent that they were using. So she is the OG, the Dai Senpai, as they call it, the 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 you know amazing senpai, the the main senpai, the big senpai of everybody. Tokino Sora's determination to stick to her idol-like nature and challenge a new chapter, showing her gentle expressiveness in her first anime theme song. And she did have an anime theme song. It is right here. We're going to talk about it. And it's Tokino Sora Zero Generation. Yeah, how live member. Uh, has paved the way of history of VTuber idol music activities. Released her latest single, Okairi Nasai. Like, Welcome Home, I believe that's what it is. Uh, the song is an opening theme song for the TV, My Wife Has No Emotions. I did cover when this came out first. I do like that anime. It is, it is an amazing little anime. It's cute. It's like Chobits for the new generation. It's very cute. And I love Chobits, uh, which depicts the married life of a main character, Kosuke Takuma, and the housework robot Mina. Uh, this marks the first memorable anime tie-up. We spoke about her production, Okairi Nasai, uh, which, Okairi Nasai, which is an anime song that closely matches the charm of the work and thoughts she put into the original song. And she says, um, Tokino Sora says, it's always been my dream to sing a theme song for an anime. So I was really happy to be chosen. But at the same time, I was a bit worried about whether fans of the original work would accept me as I've been active as a VTuber and idol. Sora, you've always said that you wanted VTubers to become a part of people's daily lives, and anime theme songs are definitely one example of that. Yes, I'm really happy that we've entered an era where people are accepting that even virtual beings like us can sing songs like this. Like we also had Watame who sang a game song. That type of thing. By the way, what's your favorite anime theme song? These are a lot of them. But for example, Oversoul by Megumi Hayashibara, which was the opening theme song for Shaman King. The sense of speed matched the atmosphere of the work. The opening line for Revive was very catchy and exciting. Uh, as for the recent songs, I liked that time I got reincarnated as a slime. And I covered the opening theme song Storyteller by Sor Az. I really uh, like how you can easily imagine the work just by reading the lyrics. Another one being Bling 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 Bang Bang Bong by Creepy Nuts which was the opening theme song of Mashi, Season 2 of Divine Awakening Candidate Selection Exam, Tokoyo, MX, and others. I like songs that are easy to remember and very impactful. And of course, a lot of Hololive uh, talents did do the bing, bang, bang, bing, bang, bang, bing, bang, bang, boom, that one. And I hope I don't get copyright struck just because I freaking sang that. What was it about My Wife Has No Emotions That Appealed To You? Uh, started reading the original work, thought it was simply a sci-fi romantic comedy, but after reading the whole series, I realized it was more than that. It's a work in which it come, the conflicts of the characters were very carefully depicted. Each story has deep theme, although we don't know what happened in our lifetime. It's a story about coexistence with robots that will likely happen someday. Yes, like Chobits did. Also depicts the conflict of robots who are supposed to have no emotions. So I find it very interesting, including the part where it shows the creative beings can have emotions. Yes, in that anime, the robots start developing emotions. They start developing more complex emotions like jealousy and anger and all those things that make us human started making them that way. The same way that uh, the Chobits kind of reached that point where um, you blur the lines between what's human and robot. The only difference is, are you organic or not? And of course, 
all other sci-fi has reached that point you know sci-fi movies sci-fi novels and such have kind of hit that point as well trying to figure out what makes you human is it our our personality is it our brains is it our our quote-unquote soul that gets brought by it what is it and of course it keeps going down into other things that she's done um about it like i've gained experience there are more songs that i think maybe i can do this now part that look goes look your heart sensors are updating song is i can anime songs that i've loved listening to and it's a song for an anime that links with the content of the work so i sang the lyrics in a way that conveys the image of the character mina mina chan very carefully and that is the thing whether you're a vtuber whether you're an idol an actual live idol or whatever when you put your effort into actually respecting the the art of the song respecting the theme of the song then it makes it amazing and Sora did an amazing job with the intro i loved it i listened to it a couple of times already like i watched the anime i'm usually one who skips the intro and then watches the rest of the anime but a couple of times i have been stuck on the intro because it is a beautifully sung song and congratulations to Sora again we have strike witches well the witches of Hollow Witches, Magical Girl Hollow Witch Exhibition in Namba Marui. This is a part of the big Hollow Witch project that they're going on, where they're doing several different designs, several different things, several different places. Uh, it finally starts tomorrow. Namba Venue will finally start tomorrow, September 8th, 28th, Saturday, or at least in this case, from what they said, it was tomorrow. But September 28th, by the time you're seeing this, has already passed, more than likely, it will start. So as of September 28th, you can see this happening in uh, the Namba venue in Namba Marui. Reservations are required for certain times on Saturday, September 28th and Sunday, September 29th, probably so it won't get super full. Reservations can be made up to 10 minutes before the entrance time, before you go to actually enter. And here are some of the pictures of it, of course, the silhouettes. Then you have some of the merchandise that they have of it in, of course, a case so that people don't actually just take it. And here you have the Namba Marui, their actual site in regards to all this information. Magical Girl, uh, they did it. Girl Hollow Witch Exhibition at Nama Marui. Magic Girl Hollow Witch Exhibition Nama Marui will be held. They have the dates and everything. Exhibition event of this will be held sequentially in various parts of Japan, starting with Yakuchu Marui. We offer a lot of fun projects such as the Rangel Animation, PVN exhibitions, life size stand, using drawing illustrations, and new goods. Namba Marui 5F event space, date September 28th, etc. etc. Please refer to the following website for details. In order to alleviate congestion, some hours of Saturday, September 28th and Sunday, September 29th will be reserved in advance. Uh, Saturday, September 28th, 1110 to 1450 and 1110 to 1450, September 29th and all the application dates that you can have it. After Monday, we will inform you of a later date, September 28th through it, that is when it's going to happen. After that, you can purchase privileges uh, and they have these various sites that you can go and visit to, to get any of your information that you want. Like it said, it's kind of like a rally or relay or whatever you want to call it from one place to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Uh, and it has started. So it's going to be going throughout Japan. If you're not in Japan, like me, that I'm not in Japan, unfortunately, I won't be able to see it. But at the very least, we can uh, vicariously live through people whenever they post on what's happening here. And congratulations to Hollow Life and all the girls who are part of the Hollow Witches phenomenon. The second Shihaku Cup is going to be happening with Shishiro Botan being a part of it. And it says, here are the players we have offered. Uh, we will also list the players we have publicly recruited in the tree section, basically the section of the uh, the tournament tree is called or whatever, you know, the, the, the brackets of where everyone is going to be. Uh, this is something that recently popped out, of course, as of September 28th. And of course, they're continuing everything here. I already have it here. They're saying offer slot, intermediate division, Yumino Akari, Aki Rosenthal, Toko Nakotasuna. Offer slot for advanced division, Tenki. Pururu is uh, Akami Karubi, Tsurugi Hiraga, uh, Fanta, and also offer slot superclass, Bonchan, uh, Pugera, Pugera, Jun Otahiboroba, Otahiroba, and Takagi. And uh, continuing on. Akami Kurubi Karubi has been offered the opportunity to play in the advanced division. Big thanks to participating. This group is on fire. And here's all the people who are more than likely going to be a part of the, each of those divisions. And we have, we may have more detailed player profiles, uh, details about the electric death match and other information we want to share with you on the 7th or the 8th. So please look forward to it. And it's just, it's barely starting out. So the 7th and the 8th is when more information is going to come out. This stuff is barely popping out. It's barely popping off. You have it here. Of course, uh, participants for Street Fighter 6 event, the second Shihaku Cup has been announced. Hosted by Shishiro Botan of the popular VTuber group Hololive, a total of eight people will compete in each of the three categories, intermediate, advanced, and ultra level. Open to professionals. The ultra levels for professionals like FGC people, both invited and publicly recruited. The broadcast destination is going to be on Shishiro Botan's channel. 
Uh, broadcast introducing all players and schedule for October 7th, Monday, and October 8th, Tuesday. The she Cup is October 13th is when it's going to start. The Intermediate Division Exhibition Match, Monday, October 14th, it's going to be Advanced and Super Divisions. Participants Intermediate is marked here, Advanced marked there, Super also marked there, and uh, Luna Mumoy, Hard Pudding uh, Kazunoko is also there. Tournament format. It's an individual competition. Three divisions, intermediate, advanced, and super. Total of eight people will participate in each category. Four in the offer category and four in the public application category. It's a double elimination tournament. So this is nice. It's nice to see this. It's nice to see this pop up. Nice to see it happen and hope that it works. Hope that it works well for, uh, I know Botan used to be a part of the of those cups. This time she's going to be an announcer for it. So it's gonna be fun with, with her uh, voice and her announcement going through there, it's gonna be nice. Welcome back to the VTuber Showcase, the place where I like to showcase all up and coming VTubers, new, old, and the like. Of course, trying to make sure that everyone gets a little bit of a share of what's at the table and pushing people forward, giving positivity, body positivity of all types to anyone who is around and wants a bit of love around here. You know, all positivity, all PNG and other VTubers are always welcome to be a part of the showcases. So this is Tiger Valentine, a vamp goddess VTuber down here, of course, with family and all this other stuff that's popping out there, you know, uh, the full design of them. And here we go, uh, taking a look at their YouTube channel, at that YouTube, I mean their Twitch channel. Hello darlings, Tiger Valentine, professional purple vampire goddess, Tiger's VTuber. This vampire feline goes around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. The business email is that. And um, we will take a look at a video here. Her, you need her on the right side, like right there, because there's a door right, like if you turn left. Turn left. Turn left. If you're holding up two fingers right now, I swear to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing. Her, you she was done. Her. Yes. And that is um, Security Breach, I believe. It's Security Breach from FNAF, Five Nights at Freddy's. And once again, I, I'm going to send you to their YouTube channel, who has, you know, a couple of shorts here and there. And as I said before, every single VTuber, no matter their design, is welcome. As long as it's a TOS friendly design, they're welcome on uh, my uh, my VTuber showcases. What I mean by TOS is, of course, no nude designs, no lewd designs, that type of stuff. I do hope this helps you grow, Tigra, and I hope that more eyes are on your channels thanks to this VTuber showcase. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.